Hi guys, my name is Lawrence Baker. I'm an Adobe Certified Expert in Photoshop CC and Photoshop Lightroom. This video is about sharpening. There are many videos out there about sharpening in Lightroom, but I have my own workflow which I've refined over many years and hopefully you'll pick up some good tips along the way. Okay guys, let's get started. F7 to turn on the left hand side panel because I want to see the navigator. Now normally I wouldn't have the left hand side panel on if I was developing an image because I want more screen real estate. But on this occasion I want to show you how to zoom in quickly onto your image at one to one. So if I press the spacebar key now I zoom in at one to one. Hit it again I go out to fit to screen or fit one to one, fit to screen. Now if I went to something ridiculous like 11 to one, which I can hardly see anything, and hit the spacebar key, I'm back to fit to screen. Back to 11 to one. You get the idea? If I click on one to one, it will go between fit to screen and one to one. Simple as that, guys. Now normally, when you come into Lightroom, it will be defaulted to fit and one to one. So don't worry too much about it, but it's a good way of zooming in quickly into your image because when you come to sharpen your image, the best view is a 100% view, one to one view. Anyway, I'm gonna turn off the left-hand side panel now by pressing F7. I'm gonna press F8 to get up the right-hand side develop panel showing the detail panel, which is where we're going to do our sharpening and noise reduction. Let me start first by zeroing everything out. So I'm going to double click on sharpening to get it to the default settings, not actually zero, but the default settings that Lightroom has got built in, which is amount 25, radius one pixel, detail 25 and masking at zero. These four sliders are the sharpening sliders, as they say. Now, I'm going to start with a mount first and explain what a mount does. A mount decides what edges it's going to pick. Now, on a very defined edge, like this boulder in the, uh, in the foreground, or this even better, this boulder here, it will pick that up very quickly, at least at 25. But as the the edges become less defined, like on some of these boulders here where the water's coming over them. As I move the slider right, it will pull in the less defined edges. So it's like an edge detecting tool. Every time you bring the slider to the right, it's gonna bring in more of the edges. Now it doesn't go to 100, it goes to 150. So you could almost overdo it. So it will pull in literally every edge and a little bit more. Why it goes to 150, I am not completely sure. But I can assure you, you will never take it to 150. So the amount brings in uh, edges, the less defined edges will come in more as you bring the slider to the right. Radius is about the edges of something. So when you, you pick an edge and then you've got a radius setting, it will be how wide from that edge you're allowing the sharpening to take place. Because sharpening is really tricking the eye. It's, it's creating a halo around that boulder, for instance, and it's saying how wide do you want the sharpening contrast to be? So it will add, almost add a white border around an object so it appears it's a luminance border don't forget it's not a color border it's the luminosity of the pixels underneath you must think upon sharpening as a, a luminosity thing it's like a local contrast around the edges of things right so that's what radius does now detail is about high frequency detail and high frequency gets bandied about a lot in photography and all it means is the finer detail like the textures on these rocks, the texture in that seaweed. That is high frequency detail. Low frequency detail is edges, sharp edges. The sharper the edge, the lower frequency it is. So that's what detail means. And I often have the detail slider quite low on an image like this because it's a landscape image and it's a broad brush stroke. You don't need fine details to be showing up and coursing artifacts. Now, if I was photographing a flower with a macro shot, of course, I would use the detail slider. 
But on a lot of images, it's not a lot of use. I will tell you that now. Masking will always be my first port of call. And I don't do it at one-to-one -one view. I do it at fit on screen. Because I will decide firstly what I want sharpened with the masking slider. And I'm going to start with that slider right away. Now in the fit to view screen, which we're in at the moment, not one to one, I am now going to press down the alt or option key, Mac or PC respectively. You must use these four sliders with the alt or option key pressed whilst you are using those sliders. It is pointless using this sharpening tool any other way, in my opinion, because you need to see the grayscale image underneath. So as I press the Alt key on my Mac, I'm seeing reset sharpening. Don't take much notice of that. Basically, I'm now going to move the masking slider up. And the minute I start playing with it, I have a grayscale view because I have the Option or Alt key pressed down. The white areas are going to be sharpened. The black areas are not going to be sharpened. And obviously the greys in between will get sharpened according to how light or dark they are. The darker they are, the less likely they are to be sharpened. The whiter they are, the more likely it is to be sharpened. As I go up, I'm looking at this image and I don't need a lot of detail on the sea because the sea is quite noisy, but naturally it's got edges within those waves, but I'm going to bring it up until I decide where I want the sharpening to take place. Now you can see those white edges around these boulders now, and that's what the radius is all about. It's going to sharpen up, create local contrast, which will fool your eye into thinking those images or those parts of the image are sharper than they actually are in reality. So don't forget anything to do with digital imaging is about tricking the eye. Anyway, I'm going to go to about there, which is 69 roughly. Now, this is when I go into my one-to-one -one view. And I might drag around with the hand to kit it into an area I like. Now, there is this tool here. And for want of a better few words, I'm calling it the Detail Zoom tool. I have never found out what Adobe have decided to name this, but it is a very useful tool and it will allow you to focus in on an area inside this box. So once you press it, you should have, uh, you've got to press it quite well, you have a crosshair. And wherever you place that crosshair will be the area in the box that it will sharpen. Now I'm going to stick to this boulder because it's in the foreground and it's I want it quite sharp. And so it's zoomed in on that area. Though I can see it a one-to-one -one view, I will mainly concentrate on this box here. And I'm obviously going to start with the amount. Again, pressing the Alt or Option key, I will drag to the right. Now, the farther I drag to the right, the more the artifacting will appear. Now, it'll appear as sort of graininess, almost like worm casts. If you look carefully at the screen, you'll see it, or especially in the one, this little zoom detail box. Now, I'm just seeing it break up about there. So that's as far as I can going to go. So it's 112. I've gone over 100. And every time you do sharpening, it'll be slightly different. You might even go back and play around with the sliders. It's very intuitive. It's, a, it's about your eye. And don't forget, you're only sharpening for the screen at the moment. Now, this is a raw file. This is the first part of sharpening because you have to sharpen on output. So sharpening is a two part process. This is almost what I call pre-sharpening. It's for what you see on the screen. When you go to output this image, whether you go to Photoshop or output with Lightroom's export tool, you will have to sharpen again. Anyway, I'm going to show you that towards the end of the video. So I've looked at that there in grayscale, and I might bring it down slightly, actually. I don't want any artifacting in this image because I believe there's enough noise as there is already. Now, radius... Now, if you keep the Alt key pressed, you can see that white edge appearing on the boulders and rocks in the foreground. I want some edge because I want some local contrast, but I don't want too much. And you can, if you go too high, you'll see a sort of blotchiness appear. You know, the image will start breaking up. That's about fine. 
So I'm slightly over sharpening this image. Now detail is my least favorite slider and I will probably, pressing the Alt key down, I will probably take this down from 25 because I don't like this slider on this type of image. It, it causes problems. You can see it's making a mess at 60. If I bring it down a little bit more, a bit a bit more, because there's not many details, fine high frequency details in this image. And even if there is, I want you concentrated on the, the sunset and the boulders and the sky, etc. I don't want you looking inside the fine details to see artifacts. So I'm not bothered about this detail slider. It's at 15. I could even take it down to zero. I've already dealt with the masking. That's always my first port of call because I deciding in advance what I want to sharpen. It seems counterintuitive to me to do the masking afterwards because you want to see what you're sharpening. So if you set the masking, you'll only see what you're going to get. So for me, it's essential. Now, it's the rest of the panel is about noise reduction. Now, luminance noise is grayscale noise, as it sounds. It's not color noise. So it represents itself as sort of a grain effect inside the shadows usually in an image. And if you shoot with a high ISO on your camera, you're almost bound to get um, some form of noise, especially if it's a night shot. So luminous noise will show itself very well on some images. And the way I, I usually set up this box is I find an area of smooth detail. And again, you've got to use the Alt key here on the luminance ones. Now I'm looking inside the area to see if I'm gonna make any difference. I don't think there's a lot of noise there. I might try another part of the image. Um, I've got my crosshair here now. I might go for that there, that'll do. Yeah, that'll do me, that's a good area. So I'm looking for noise there. There is a little bit of noise, but not a great deal. And as I bring the slider up, it will get rid of the noise. So. I'm going to go with about 20 there because I don't think there's a great deal of noise in this image. Now, if I start to take detail away from the image, I can bring it back by moving this slider to the right. And I usually keep it in line with the, the luminance slider, but it should be down to your eye. So the higher you bring it up, the more noise you're bringing back into the detail area. So if you want to preserve detail, it's a balance, it's a trade-off between how much you set the luminance and how much you want to keep of the detail. Because uh, what luminance slider does, it smooths out the graininess. It's almost like uh, you're getting a bit of water on a, on a brush, on a watercolour, and smoothing out the area. Or smoothing out the area with a oil paint with a bit of white spirit on your brush to sort of to, to blend it in. So you're blending in the noise. So it might lose detail, so I don't need to use it much here, but there you go. I might keep it roughly in line with the luminance slider. And again, for the contrast slider, if you're losing contrast detail or contrast edges, you would bring this slider up to preserve the contrast. And I don't believe there's much contrast being lost there. But in some Im images, not in this image in particular, you will notice it very much, the luminance noise. So that's luminance noise covered. The next one is colour noise, and this is the only slider you don't need to press the Alt key down for, or Option key, because it's about colour noise, and the Alt key is about showing you grayscale, so it won't have any effect on this slider. Colour noise is becoming rarer and rarer as sensors and cameras get better. And the same for luminance as well, luminance noise. But colour noise will present itself as blotchiness, and you don't often see it. I would be hard pushed to make my camera produce colour noise, and my camera isn't that brilliant. It's a, it's a Leica X1 here, um, and that's all I ever use. It's got a fixed lens. It's a 12 uh, megapixel camera. It does me fine. I can get this shot here was one of the shots I've taken with it. I'm very happy with it. I'm not a photographer as such. I like Photoshop and I like Lightroom, um, but I'm not the best photographer in the world. I'm the first one to admit that. But anyway, colour noise will present itself as blotchiness in the colour. Now, the further you bring up this slider, obviously, the more it will smooth out this colour blotchiness. Again, I don't think there's much in this image. This colour slider doesn't have a massive effect. So that's why it's defaulted to 25. It doesn't do any harm if you put it up to even this amount, because 
it's not getting rid of any color noise because there's not hardly any color noise in the image. So you can play around with it and look in that box and hardly notice any difference. I often leave it around 25 because it's not having a great deal of effect on the image, noise or no noise. Detail again will preserve the detail in the image if you've smoothed it out too much with the color slider. Smoothness is quite a new addition and what it will do is it will smooth out large block areas of a blotchy color and you've got to have a trade-off because it it might introduce speckling uh, uh, or blotchiness depending on which way you move it so you, it's a bit of a trade-off and if you've got a lot of color noise you will see a lot of effect using this smoother slider it's quite good as I say color noise is quite rare these days now I've covered the detail panel and sharpening and noise reduction I think in quite good detail. Now there is localized sharpening with the brushes or the graduated filter etc but that's about local adjustments to noise and it can be quite useful. The next thing to talk about is exporting your image because this sharpening, now I'm going to bring this screen back out to one to one, this sharpening is being done on the screen at one to one. It's just for sharpening it up for the screen. It's all for you know, your benefit inside Lightroom. When you come to export this image, you're going to resize it normally. Now this is probably about 4000 by 2000 pixels. If I was to take this to a Flickr, it's going to have to be scaled down. And if you want to get really fussy, what you would do is take this image into Lightroom, size it for the size you know you're going to put it onto Flickr with, let's say, then sharpen it again, then output it to Flickr. Now, it works slightly differently in Lightroom. You export it. Now, I'm going to bring up the export dialog box now. And to show you, under output sharpening, you have a choice to sharpen it for screen, let's say, and you can pick low, standard, or high. I always, always have this ticked, even if I've done pre-sharpening here, because the pre-sharpening is for what I see on the screen. It's, it's helping you towards where you need to be. And this box or this this output sharpening panel does a really good job because you're going to change the size of your image usually when you output it to screen or even to print. Now, Lightroom have, has its own print module and it's very good and I recommend that you do the pre-sharpening and then go to the print module and do some sharpening there. And I will cover the print module in a later video. But for screen, always have it ticked. If you've done some sharpening, standard will do a very good job because you're almost bound to resize it. I'm limiting the file size there to uh, two megabytes. Uh, so it's going to do a resize and that standard will do a very good job. If I'm getting really fussy, I'm going to go out to print. I would probably take this into Photoshop and use the Photoshop sharpening tools. After using the sharpening here, export it to uh, Photoshop, sharpen with their sharpening tools. Uh, at the size you're going to print it at or export it to. And that is crucial because you should always sharpen to your final size. That's why I sharpen to 100% view because I'm only sharpening for the screen here. So it's very important to remember that sharpening is a two-part process. I think I've covered everything here, guys. If there's anything else I can think of, I would probably say I would, should take you into the print module, but this will take this video past 20 minutes probably. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys, and I hope you've got something from it. Thank you very much.